Nintendo Switch. Okay, uh, problem with this one is not as obvious as you'd expect. So looking at this port just straight away, you'd say, hmm, no problem. It looks like it looks fine. However, if you get in here and go, yeah, okay, well that shouldn't be moving at all. And then uh, that shouldn't be moving at all either. So pretty much what we're going to have to do is disassemble, take off this port, and then do our testing. I don't think we can trust anything with the port on. Uh, the center plastic in this could be compromised. These pins in the center could be touching. So let's just take it off, uh, disassemble it entirely, take it off, and test from there. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, your one-stop shop for all your PCB projects in need. Their services include PCB prototype, PCB assembly, flex and rigid PC flex types, HDI PCB, CNC machining, and 3D printing. Check out my associates link in the description for a $5 coupon that you can apply to your next project. Head over to PCBWay.com with your next design. Now back to our repair. Okay, we're back and we have the board out of the housing and are preparing to remove this port. Before we do, I will throw up our temperatures. They are brought to you by the like button and the subscribe button. If you click those, you'll know when I post my next video. If you hit the notification bell, you'll definitely know. Well, when YouTube wants to let you know. As always, these temperatures are subject to change if the job changes. But I rarely come off of them for Nintendo Switch work. All right, switch you back to microscope. So we will be flooding the anchor points with low melts. I am not going to flood the visible pins on the other side with low melts. I have decided to be a little more cautious about that, even though I have had a million good pulls doing it that way. It's just, if there's any damage, I may be, you know, I may not be helping the situation by uh, low melting those. But I've not seen any reason to stop low melting the anchors. This way, when the pins are when the pads, the pin pads are ready to go, the port goes don't have to worry about the anchors at all. Plus it makes cleanup much simpler. Wicking low melt is much easier than wicking unleaded solder. Any day, anyway. All right, let's get this board off. I'm oh, sorry, get this, let's get this port off. I just, now this damage was very likely done because we were very careful with our pull to not let it fly off or anything so this was already torqued so looks like we're going to have some pad work to do let's check and make sure we have no bridges I see no bridges let's test our Pi 3 USB while we're over here I'm not going to flip the board around most of our work is going to have to be done on that side anyway Okay, okay, we're still on the ground. Let's check the line going from this capacitor to the Pi 3 USB. And it is short, so we definitely have a bad Pi 3 USB. Let's check our filters. We want these filters to be have continuity straight through. but not side to side. Okay, all of our filters seem okay, but we know we have a bad pie. Let's go ahead and remove the pie, and then we'll test again, make sure that short goes away. If it does not go away, there's not much point in fixing pads. All right, let's check, make sure we have no bridged connections. No bridge connections that I can see. And let's see if we're still short. And 
it appears we have fixed that situation. So very good. No more short. Okay, let's put a new chip on. You want to get that center pad wetted using this method. And you want to make sure the solder grabs the chip before you let go. Once surface tension has done its job, remove the heat, wait for it to dry a little bit, push down, reapply the heat, and good. Should be flat and we should be aligned. We'll clean up. Check for proper alignment with the alignment marks on the side and the pads on the board. Everything looks aligned. The chip looks flat. Now let's check again for a short. And no short. So excellent. Not the end all be all. Uh, I found I'll probably get one in ten of these chips, no matter where I get them, it's going to be bad, so we'll just have to test after we get a new port on, but we have a lot of work before we can do that. Before we do anything else, we're going to test the rest of the board. Uh, we need to check our M92 T36 area. First thing, as always, we'll test is the Pi 3 USB capacitor. This one goes to Pi 3 USB on the other side of the board through the N92 T36. The side we do not want short of the ground is the side going to the chip, and it seems to be fine. We just changed the chip. It probably would have been shorter to have retested earlier. Okay, let's test everything else. We want to check all the lines going to the chip. Okay, they seem fine. Now, in the case of this chip, uh, capacitor, uh, one side will be ground. That side. If they have two lines going to the chip, one side will always be ground. Okay, and this is our CPU one. If this one's short, it's usually not a good sign. And it seems to be fine. Let's move on. Check out our MOSFET area. Let's check out our little filter array. Seems fine. Check and make sure Invincible fuse is still being invincible. It is. Now let's check these center pads here. None of them should have a pathway to ground. All looking good. Let's check these guys here. They seem fine. Let's check and make sure we do not have a short on our coil. But make sure we do have continuity. It's usually good to check continuity first, then you can check for the short. Because yet there's some manufacturer residue on those things that could be a little bit difficult to get through. Let's check our BQ24193 area. BQ24193 has several capacitors with multiple lines going to the uh, chip. Same deal, one side will always be ground in that case. I just know, kind of know what size to test at this point. Okay, and like I said, these guys have no pathway to ground. All right, everything is checking out otherwise. So, I think we can get on with our port situation. All right, let's see if we can get these chunks out of our anchor joints. There we go. Alright, let's clean this area up.
And this is why you don't go scraping across these pads. They're not real strong to begin with. And you can really do some damage like that one there. Okay, we've gone to indirect lighting so we can get a good non-glary view of things. We need to do some scraping. Using our awesome grinding pin. I'm so happy with this purchase. It's unbelievable. I can't name, but I really even hardly think of the last time, you know, besides my irons, I've been this happy with a purchase. Okay, and those last two are ground. Okay, so I think we're just going to go ahead and tune up all the pads and those at that area. I'll be a little bit gentle on that bottom row. Now for six pads, I'm not really going to consider lugs. For just one, yeah, very elegant solution if it's just one. Okay, for the purpose of running these jumpers, I'll be using my iNeasy uh, black Quan Lee tweezers. And we will be using our WX Pico Pencil Iron at before stated temperatures. Good joint. If you tug on them a little bit, they don't give. It's usually pretty good. That's pretty good. to these guys and this guy's ground. So I think we're okay. Let's clean it off and have a look. Okay, I may be being a perfectionist, but these last two joints just look a little dry. I would like to get more solder on them. Not too much solder. Not looking for bridges. Alright, that's much better. Oh, there we go. Much better. Okay, we're going to apply some uh, UV solder mask to secure these. What you really want to do is cover the joints the, where it's soldered. You want to cover that pretty good. Don't worry about making a mess. You do want to thin it out, but not a big deal. You want to cover the solder joints so because when you're placing the port these will float there's just no way around it but the ideally we would like them not to move well not just ideally you 100% don't want them to move so the solder mask helps secure them in place even if the solder wets 
they won't get sucked up into the port. A good cure is very important here. Okay, that's relatively what I'm looking for. Next step is to grab my UV lamp and then we're just going to set it on here and let it do its thing. I'm going to walk away, I'm going to have a snack and then I'll come back once it's cured. I find that's the best way for me. Uh, using the laser is not an ideal solution for me. I get too impatient. And you know what? We might go ahead and UV cure that pad. We can secure it with some solder mask and we'll just scrape it off after. Okay, the lamp's been sitting on there for quite a while, and it seems like we are well geared. Right now, I want to do some scraping. I think we'll just use the grinding pin to get rid of this. Build up there, I didn't see. If we don't want that there, and we'll just gently do it over here too. Just want to uncover the pad. Okay, next thing to do is to tin these jumper wires. All right, so you want to be gentle with this, but you don't want to be too damn gentle. Do you want solder on them? Uh oh, we lost one. Blue. That was not cool. And ten last one. Okay, so we did lose one. If it hadn't happened here, we probably would have happened when we placed the port, and that wouldn't have been good. Okay. Feels really solid, but it felt really solid last time, too. It could have been the cure, it could have been the joint, hard to say. Okay, let's cure that area again, and I'll just let it cure for a little while. Again, I want it to be nice and secure, and then we'll try and tin it, and make sure it doesn't get sucked in the iron, and go from there. Okay, it's been curing for a while, so I believe we should be solidly back in place. Let's tin that one, make sure it doesn't get sucked up in our iron again. Yay! And we have successfully tinned that one. Let's tin up our port. Alright, place our port. Let's flow it in place using our normal method which is to warm up the board enough to pull the solder I am not fast porting here, this is actually how fast I'm moving the nozzle I don't want to keep it in one place long enough to burn plastic I'm looking for these outer pins to wet 
and then we'll go a little longer just to make sure we get the inner pads, what inner pads we have. Okay, we've wetted. Press down. A reasonable amount of force, especially since we're on top of jumpers. And hold while it dries. Hold a little longer just to make sure that the inner row dries. Okay, let's perform our nudge chest. We might get a little play because we're on jumpers, but eh, it feels pretty, pretty solid. All right, I'm reasonably hopeful here. Okay, reasonably good feed through. Let's check these other pins, the front pins. When you're concentrating on the center row, sometimes you can not do a good job of soldering the front row. The center row is the more important part, so you can because you can always touch these up later. But it looks like we got them real good. I'm going to clean up off screen, uh, clean out the port and everything else, and then we'll come back and perform some tests and see if everything's working as expected. Okay, all cleaned up and off screen and ready to perform some testing. So let's just see if we get anything resembling normal behavior. Okay, I look pretty normal. I'd like to see that on the other side too. Excellent, that looked pretty normal. Good, good, good. Not the end all be all. Throw our battery squid on. First we use the OEM charger to do a quick activation. Oh, actually have to have the channel on. Try that again. We just wanna see a rise in current, steady. Don't wanna see it get hung up anywhere. Very good, that looks good. Excellent. Okay, so next step is to put it in the housing enough to test with our good bat with our charged battery and assuming everything checks out there, we'll let it charge on its battery and we will perform a dock test soon after that because that's going to be very important in this case. Okay, we're back with my charged battery. Let's perform a test. 0.47 that's normal full battery symbol and then reset okay fast charging and boot up excellent now we want to test the other side and make sure it's fast charging on the other side and we are fast charging on the other side so so far so good now we need to let it charge on its own battery and boot back up and then we will try a dock test Okay, and as you can see, first first shot and we got the dock. The dock is the hardest thing to get when you've had pull pads on the port and it can cause you the most trouble, but we got it first try. That's excellent. Okay, now that we know we're docking, let's perform some other tests. Let's check our Joy-Cons. As you can see in the USB meter, pulling 15 volts at 0.95, that's good. Let's connect our Joy-Cons. We should see a raise in that. Yep, all the way back up to one amp. We're connected and charging. That's good. Make sure we're picking up our networks. Excellent. Make sure we're picking up the Joy-Cons wirelessly. 
Excellent. And let's make sure we're picking up my game. And we did. Right there. Excellent. So, everything looks like it's working. We are fast charging. We are charging both sides. We're pulling the 15 volts we'd be expecting on the OEM charger. And we're docking. So, in summary, we had a torqued up port. Uh, we pulled the port and ended up having six pull pads. Um, six critical pull pads. Uh, we ran jumper slows. Could have been five or six. I don't know. Anyway, watch the video. Um, we also tested uh, the Pi 3 USB. We tested that first because we were on that side of the board in the board holder. And we found a short on the main cap for the Pi 3 USB. We replaced the Pi 3 USB. Uh, relieved, that relieved the short. Uh, we ran our jumpers. We replaced the port. Uh, and everything seems to be working fine now. So good to go. Uh, if you have any questions about the equipment I used in this video, take a look in the description below. They're all Amazon affiliate link down there. So if you click on any of those links or buy anything there in that session, it doesn't have to be with any of that equipment. A small portion of that will go to, uh, to supporting the channel and it won't cost you anything extra. Uh, it would be greatly appreciated. That's really all I have to ask of you. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.